Yo, what is up guys, Ghost here. Welcome back to another video. In today's, we are going to be going over all of the best vehicle loadouts in Battlefield 2042 for Season 7. Sort of like a overall, what is the vehicle meta for each vehicle. Hopefully this should help some of you guys out there who are fairly new to the game. Or even if you're not, the vehicles in the game have seen a lot of changes over the past few seasonal patches. And most recently, in Season 7 with 7.0, all of the ground vehicles got a really, really nice buff to their turret turn speed. So vehicles have really been making a comeback in this game in a big way, especially the ground vehicles. Maybe not so much the air vehicles, they've always been pretty darn good, but things have changed. So let's go over the lay of the land as it is right now. Guys, if you do enjoy the content here on the channel, don't forget to hit up that subscribe button, hit the like button down below. Over 60% of you guys who do watch my videos on the regular are not subscribed, so if you see them in the recommended section and you're not sure if you're subscribed or not, go check down below. It really would mean a lot to me if you guys would hit up that sub button. I also really wanted to thank you guys for the recent support. You've absolutely been killing it, and believe me, I do not take it for granted. So seriously, guys, thank you, as always, for the support here. Okay, let's jump straight into it here, starting with the LATV4. As you can see, I don't really use this vehicle all that much at all. This, to me, is mainly just a transport vehicle. You can get a couple of kills with it, but nevertheless, let's go over it. So, once you've unlocked the thermal smoke, you definitely want to take this. And this goes for any vehicle that has a choice between thermal smoke and the smoke discharger. The difference here is that the smoke discharger will stop people from spotting you and the thermal smoke will actually block lock-on. So if you have a missile flying at you, hit your thermal smoke, and it works the same way as flares on air vehicles, it will just stop that missile dead in the air. Way more useful than blocking spotting. Down here, repair system or detection pulse, pretty much a no-brainer. The repair system is going to heal your vehicle by about 25%. It's going to kickstart your auto repair, and it's going to get rid of any mobility hits to the turret or the tracks, the wheels, whatever it may be that's impeding your movement. Now, heading to the weapon station, a few patches ago, they actually added these three weapons down here, which is why I still haven't gotten around to unlocking them. The flat cannon is absolutely insane for taking out air vehicles. Do not sleep on this weapon. Obviously, you're not really going to be able to do anything against infantry or tanks with this, so if you do want to do something about infantry, I would recommend the HMG with the thermal scope. The miniguns with the thermal is also a good choice here. But if you're having trouble specifically with air vehicles, the flat cannon is extremely powerful unless the air vehicle outranges you. So just keep that in mind. Moving on to the Wildcat then, we've got 30mm cannons or 35s. They have recently removed the other two cannons for this vehicle. It used to be able to take on sort of a an IFV role, like from past Battlefield games. That is no longer the case. This is now a dedicated anti-air vehicle. I personally prefer the 30s. The 35s are good, and some people do use them, but it just feels to me like the 30s shred air vehicles so much faster. I think they have better range. It's easier to lead your target as well with these. Overall, they just seem more powerful and more easy to use. The 35mm cannons do have one advantage though, and that is that they do more damage to ground vehicles like tanks. But like I said, this is not really an anti-armor platform. So if your goal is anti-air, then I recommend the 30s. Anti-aircraft missile or anti-tank missile. I like to go for the anti-tank missile just so I have some protection against armor. You can also chip in some decent damage with this. I think it does something like 25, maybe 30 damage along with the 30mm cannons, once the 35s are better, the 30s will still do some decent damage to armor. You can take out a tank if you play it safe. Now, a lot of people will say this is wrong and that you should go for the anti-aircraft missile. Guys, do not waste your time with anti-air missiles. And I'm saying this as somebody who spends most of their time in vehicles in this game flying, okay? You are never going to get a kill against any decent pilot with the AA missiles, this is purely going to act as a deterrent. It's going to make the pilot pop their flares and go into cover, but that's about it. Now, you may get some kills against worse pilots, so if this is something you want to do, there's not necessarily anything wrong with that, but personally, I believe the anti-tank missile is simply the better choice. If you want to take out air vehicles, this is the bad boy you need right here. So onto the equipment slot here. 
Again, pretty much a no-brainer, thermal smoke. We do also have the smoke launcher this time, which kind of acts the same way as the infantry one that you can use on the uh, assault class. Not really something you want to be using on an anti-air platform. I'm sure your infantry would appreciate you laying down a smoke screen for them, but it's not really going to benefit you. So take the thermal smoke there. And then finally, we have repair system or cyber warfare protection, which stops you from getting hacked. Repair system is far more versatile here, and that is why I recommend it. Weapon station number one. I like to go with the HMG and the thermal. Again, really versatile, good up close, good at medium range, even pretty good at longer ranges as well. The 40mm grenade launcher, it is very powerful, but only at very close range. So once the targets are out of range, this gunner seat is essentially going to be worthless. Moving over to the weapon pod, the 60mm flat cannon is absolutely insane and you're going to see that this will be my instant recommendation on other vehicles like the ram however since this vehicle is already an aa platform you know most of the time you're not going to have somebody in this second gunner position especially if you're somebody who likes to let's say camp in the wildcat a little bit back on the map i don't really see much point taking this if you've already got the 30 millimeter cannons maybe in some niche scenarios when you overheat these you can switch seats take the flat pod and try to finish off the aircraft if he's close enough but these are still good if you have a gunner alternatively you can take either the canister shock pod or the kinetic grenade pod perhaps if you're on a map with lots of buildings and you can sort of lob these in through windows and doorways the commander seat uh, you want to take the thermal sensor array again that's a new one so that's why i haven't unlocked it yet but obviously it's better than the regular sensor array and then you've got the detection pulse now the mav once again Thermal smoke package, same choices here. Repair system, no choices on the first weapon seat there. Weapon station two, you have the 50 millimeter cannon here, but I would actually recommend going for the 40 millimeter GL. This thing is just so insane at flushing out enemies and doing tick damage to them. So even if you lob a grenade in the window and it doesn't kill anybody, it's at least going to damage them. And maybe even more importantly, it's going to act as area of denial. So that right there is really, really strong. The tow missile is probably the weakest of the three I would say here. The 50 mil cannon is also very, very good. But again, if you go back to the original weapon seat, you've also got a 40 millimeter auto cannon there uh, for that person who's more than likely going to be occupying that seat. So, you know, 50 millimeter cannon, or the 40 mil GL. Moving on to the weapon pod, I would definitely say the strongest one is the 60 millimeter mortar pod. Very powerful against infantry, also does great damage to vehicles. And this one has recently seen a buff to its range. So it has way more range than it used to in the last patch. Don't sleep on this one. The other choices here are decent as well, but overall I would probably stick with the 60 millimeter mortar. And again, here in the commander seat, you're gonna wanna take the thermal sensor array. So next up we have the Tor, the railgun tank, so you've got the hammer, or we've got the maul. Now the difference between these two is that the maul does more damage, but it takes longer to charge up your shot, and you also get less ammunition, and you can also turn the turret, whilst you're charging your shot, a little bit slower than you can with the hammer. Now if we head over to Sorrow's Scribbles here, and I will link these down below because this is a fantastic resource, here you can see an example of the damage. So here's the hammer, and here's the maul, and if we scroll down, this is the damage it's going to do against certain vehicles. So uh, let's just scroll down to something meaningful, like a tank. Here we have the tanks. So this indicates a frontal shot. This is a side shot or a turret shot. And then this is a rear shot. So this is the hammer, remember. And this is the damage you can do with the maul. So the maul can three shot a tank in the front, three shot in the side, and two shot it in the rear. Whereas the hammer is going to take five shots in the front, four shots in the side, and then three shots in the rear. That is an absolutely massive difference. If we come down to the helicopters, which is one of the things that people often pick a railroad tank to deal with, you can see that the Maul one-shots all of them, jets as well. Whereas it won't one-shot any of them if you're using the hammer. So to me, the Maul is just absolutely a no-brainer. On the secondary weapon front here, we used to just have the LMG and the HMG. They recently added this one here, the coaxial canister, which is kind of like a fast firing shotgun. This thing is really powerful, 
very, very capable of one-shotting infantry. So this is what I like to use at the moment. But again, nothing really wrong with using the HMG if you prefer that. Then once again, we have a familiar choice. I recommend the Thermal Smoke again. And then down here, we have something a little bit different. You do have the Repair System, but we've also got the Active Protection System, APS, which basically stops any incoming projectile. So anything that is going to really do any meaningful damage to your tank, this is going to stop it. It doesn't last for very long and it does have a fairly lengthy cooldown, but it is incredibly powerful. In fact, I believe the only thing it doesn't stop is C5. So for that reason, I prefer to pick this over the repair system. As for the weapon station, once again, they added this new weapon here, the 20mm canister shot, and that's what I've been recommending. The 40mm grenade launcher, once again, is probably more powerful in the right situation, but it just doesn't really have the range. Okay, moving on to the Cav Brawler, this one is a bit unique. It's got this close defense system here, which basically spits out grenades to either side of it, killing or at least maiming any infantry that are close by. That sounds like a lot of fun, right? So obviously that's going to be my pick here. The Smoke Discharger isn't very good. Cyber Warfare Protection System, not very good either. And this right here is going to protect you from anybody trying to C5 you. And you'll also see down here that my second pick is, once again, APS. What is APS's weakness? C5. So the close protection system works really, really well in tandem with APS to give you that full protection. Weapon system number one, the 25mm APDS cannon is very, very strong, does great damage to vehicles. The 40mm canister shot is good for infantry, but it won't do anything to a tank, so APDS is definitely the way to go, especially since you've got the LMG, right, as your coaxial here, so... You can still deal with the infantry. Weapon Station 2, this kind of depends on the situation. You definitely want to go with 20mm flak or the GL. Again, incendiary GL, absolutely disgusting weapon. Very, very good against infantry. But the same can be said for the 20mm flak cannon. And that means you're going to be able to defend yourself against air vehicles. Now, that being said, this weapon right here, the 25mm, is very good at taking out helicopters, tanks, infantry, pretty much anything that you throw at it. So you can definitely defend yourself against air vehicles, even if you take the GL here. But if you want that extra air defense, then the flat cannon can be of some use. Hovercraft, not much of a choice. Thermal smoke, repairs. Weapon Station 1, as you guys can see, I haven't really used this vehicle all that much. The flat cannon, again, is very, very strong. HMG and thermal is strong. 40mm grenade launcher is also pretty strong at close range. Weapon Station 2, you want to go with the LMG and thermal, and Weapon Station 3 is the same. Now, the Nightbird, you've got two main choices here. The miniguns or the 20mm cannons. Now, I would always recommend the miniguns because... You will probably never overheat these unless you're going into some sort of a 1v1 heli to heli. But when you're going for infantry, these have blisteringly fast TTK. You will never overheat them. And if you get good at using them and aiming with them, they simply are one of the best weapons on any vehicle in the game. However, the 20mm cannons do have splash damage. They are much more forgiving. But by the time you've blasted down one player, they're going to be overheated pretty much. So... You're going to have to work with a much more hit and run play style. There's nothing wrong with this. If you're a new player, you just want to rack up some kills in this thing and get to grips with the movement of the vehicle and you're going to learn to use the miniguns later. That's absolutely fine. But the overall best bet here is the miniguns if you're playing for the end game. Secondary, definitely go for the air to ground missile. The rocket pods do do splash damage and you can kill infantry with them, but What's the point when you've already got the miniguns that are far better? Using the air to ground missile, you can do 70 damage to a tank and then maybe the rest of your team can finish it off or you can wait for the reload and then fire that third missile, killing the tank outright by yourself. If you take the rocket pods, you're pretty much defenseless against any armor. Moving on to the bolt here. This time we have a bit of a toss up between thermal smoke and repairs. Thermal smoke is very, very good but only if you're getting locked on by a missile, which isn't really that much of a common occurrence if you're in a ground vehicle, right? So the repair system, this is useful all of the time against any kind of damage. So that's why I go with the repairs. Equipment slot two, these are all kind of crap, if I'm honest with you. I go with the anti-tank mines. 
The cluster mines are against infantry. These are both fairly situational, as is the missile launcher. This missile launcher is very, very powerful, but you pretty much have to get right up close to a tank to be able to use this effectively because you can't aim it. It just fires straight out the front of the vehicle. And if you're going head to head with a tank in a bolt, you're probably barking up the wrong tree anyway. The weapon station, once again, the good old minigun here with the thermal, no HMG on this one. The 50 millimeter cannon is also a very strong option. 40mm GL is also very good. The tow missile in this situation I would say is probably the weakest of the bunch just because it has such a long reload time. So personally, I prefer going with the 50mm cannon or I would go with the minigun and the thermal. Now the EBLC Ram, this is one of my favorite vehicles, especially on Haven. It's just so incredibly well rounded. So for the primary weapons, we have a toss up here between the 40mm cannon, the howitzer and the missile launcher. Ever since I unlocked the missile launcher, I've just never looked back. It just seems to be incredibly versatile. You can one-shot air vehicles with this. You can do around 50% damage to a tank with this as well. And you can one-shot infantry with it. It's so incredibly powerful for hit and run, especially if you target the rear of a tank. So that is going to be my pick here. HMG. And then equipment slot one, I go with the thermal smoke so that you can get rid of any lock-ons from scout helicopters, for example. And then we've got the active protection system down below. Now, weapon station one, HMG plus thermals here, really well-rounded loadout to allow your gunner to deal with any target close or far away. Again, 40 millimeter grenade launcher. I know it's tempting, but it's just not great at those medium to longer ranges for defense. So moving on to the weapon pod here, I would always go with the flak pod. Absolutely insane damage against air vehicles. And a lot of the time, I think helicopters don't really think of the ram as an anti-air vehicle. And this thing can really, really surprise them with the barrage missile launcher and the flak pod. If you're driving this thing and you're alone, it's really, really easy just to hit F4 on your keyboard, at least if you're playing on PC, and just switch over to this flak pod and just deal some insane damage to that helicopter. Pondhawk, thermal smoke and repair system, pretty much a no-brainer there. Okay, now we're starting to get into some of the more juicy vehicles. So here we have the US attack helicopter, the Apache. So here you've got a choice between smart rockets, anti-vehicle rockets, and anti-personnel rockets. Straight away, I would rule out anti-personnel because this is really not the role of the pilot for the attack helicopter to kill infantry. That's your gunner's role. Your role is to take out enemy armor. And that's why I go with the vehicle rockets. They just do insane damage. And if we go and take a look again here at Sorrow Scribbles, here are the anti-vehicle rockets. And this is the area I want to focus on against air vehicles so this is the damage here against an attack helicopter if you hit an attack heli with one of these anti-vehicle rockets it will do 36 damage so you can three shot the heli you can two shot the nightbird you can two shot the stealth heli and you can two shot the jet that is insane if you look at the smart rockets here in comparison they are nowhere near as good and then if we go up to uh, a tank the anti-vehicle rockets do 7 damage, and the smart rockets do 8. Now, the smart rockets do have some homing capabilities, so that is going to make it a little bit easier on you, but the anti-vehicle rockets have more splash damage, I believe. For the secondary missile here, you have heat-seeking missiles, air-to-ground missiles, or the tow missile. Now, there's nothing really wrong with taking heat seekers if you're a new pilot and you're learning the game. You can definitely get some kills with these, so if that's your goal, then go for it. But if you want to think about end game loadouts here, the tow missile is far superior. These will do 30 damage to a tank. So you can rack up 60 damage with these, then switch to the anti-vehicle rocket pods and finish off that tank. No problem at all, especially if you have the help of your gunner. The air to ground missiles, they do do more damage than a tow. They do 35, but they take longer time to lock on, a longer time to fire, I'm not sure on the replenish times, maybe they're kind of similar there, but you can dish out damage with two tow missiles pretty much back to back in the blink of an eye, and what's more, they can't be flared or smoked or anything. Then you've got your flares, of course, and the repair system, and then for the gunner, you have a choice between 30mm cannons and the 30mm plus the thermal. Now, normally you'll probably say, well, it's a no-brainer, right? Take the thermals, but the regular 30mm cannon actually has a zoom, 
if you take the thermal, that replaces the zoom. And in some maps, the thermals aren't very good. For example, on Hourglass, the sand on the map is just too hot that it completely blows out the thermal imaging. So in that situation, I would rather recommend using the 30 millimeter cannons with the zoom, if you can remember to change your loadout, that is. Right, next up, we have the US Jet, the F-35. So here the toss-up is between the 25mm cannon and the 30mm cannon. The 25mm cannon is more accurate, it does more damage to light vehicles, more damage to infantry, but the 30mm cannon has a slower rate of fire and does more damage to ground vehicles, to armoured vehicles. So I always prefer going with the 25mm because you can kill light ground vehicles, helicopters, infantry, the only thing you can't damage with it is armoured targets like tanks and stuff. But if you take the 30mm cannons, you can't kill any infantry with these. I mean, technically you can, but it is beyond difficult to hit those shots just because of the sheer spread on this cannon. So secondary weapons here, we've got heat-seeking missiles, air-to-ground missiles, radar missiles, and rocket pods. Again, same thing with the helicopters here. If you're new and you want to get some air-to-air -air kills, nothing wrong with going with heat seekers or radar missiles but if you want the best loadout here i recommend going with the rocket pods these have also fairly recently been added into the game the best loadout used to be the air to ground missiles they would do a combined 70 damage to a tank but now it's definitely the rocket pods they do insane damage to armor they do great damage to infantry they do great damage to air targets they pretty much destroy anything you throw them at and you don't have to lock on with them either Next up, we have the stealth helicopter. So we have the gun pods or the 30 millimeter cannon pods. Now the gun pods are very good against lightly armored targets like Jeeps, enemy helicopters, etc. They will absolutely shred them. The cannon pods don't do so great damage against helis, but they're still pretty decent. The big appeal to these though, is that they have great splash damage and it's just so much easier to target and kill infantry with them. Now you can kill infantry, with the gun pods but it's very very hard to hit them in fact i would say it's even harder to use these on infantry than it is to use the miniguns on the nightbird for secondary weapons here i would go ahead and take the tow missile same reason as on the attack helicopter again you can use the heat seeking missile here if you feel so inclined but i would say the tow is definitely much stronger than the agm and then for countermeasures here you want to take flares you can take repairs if you want but flares are way more powerful, especially when you double them up with the stealth mode of the stealth helicopter that stops you, of course, from getting locked on at all. Moving on to the Condor, here we've got the repairs. Gunner seat number one. Personally, I prefer the 30mm cannon. The 50 does more damage to vehicles, but I find the 30 to be better for infantry. And let's face it, you're not really going to be getting into a transport vehicle or a gunship, as they're now called, to be killing enemy tanks, right? You're going to be getting in it to transport infantry and fend off enemy infantry. Okay, next up we have the tank, and these are gonna be identical. So this is the US tank, but it's pretty much the same as uh, the Russian tank. So you've got the Empath shell, the HE shell, or the Staff shell. So let's head over to Sorrow Scribbles here and take a look at some of the differences. So the Empath shell is the better munition for taking out enemy armor. The HE shell is better for infantry, and the Staff shell, it's not really great for anything. It locks onto things, basically. That's the only difference. But if it isn't locked on, it doesn't really do any extra damage. So if we take a little scroll down here, here we've got damage against tanks. So this is the M patch, shall remember. 22 in the front, 28 in the side, 35 in the rear. So this is a four shot. Sorry, this is a five shot. This is a four shot. And this is a three shot. If you go with the HE shell, the damage here is heavily nerfed. I mean, what is that? Six... That's a seven shot in the front there. That is a six shot in the side. And it's not even a four shot in the rear. It's a five shot in the rear. So you really do nerf your ability to tango, I guess, with enemy tanks there. Depends on the map that you're playing, right? If you're playing on Haven and there's maybe only one enemy piece of armor, maybe you can get away with using the HE shell. But if you're playing on a map with lots of tanks and you're constantly engaging in tank on tank battles, then I would definitely go with the Empath. This one here is the Staff Shell. And as you'll see, it barely does any more damage than the HE Shell, so it's pretty comparable there, unless it is locked on. So this is that Shell's special ability. You can lock onto enemy vehicles, even air vehicles with this, by the way, if somebody is so flaming. But unfortunately, most of the time, people aren't so flaming. 
The so is also kind of buggy. It doesn't really work all the time. Even when somebody is so flaming, a lot of the time the game just decides not to show you that your teammate's so flaming. So for that reason, it's just very undependable. You know, maybe if you see there's somebody on your team so flaming all the time, you can go ahead and pick this shell, and then you will do 32 damage to a tank and 40 damage if it hits in the rear. Don't ask me how you hit a tank in the rear with a guided so flam shell, but apparently it's possible. So the only major advantage that the HE shell has here is that it has more splash damage, and so you're going to be able to take out those infantry a little bit easier. But the impact shell is no scrub either. It's definitely fine for killing infantry, so I would definitely recommend the MPAT overall. For secondary weapons, definitely go with the HMG. For your first equipment slot, take the Thermal Smoke, and then for number two, you want to take Active Protection. Always better option than the repairs, in my opinion. For weapon station number one, I actually really like the tow missile here. Now, again, there's nothing wrong with going for an HMG, but with a tow missile, this is great for taking out the enemy tank. So you can fire your tank barrel, and then while it's on cooldown, assuming you don't have a gunner with you, you can actually switch over to the tow missile and do a another like 25 damage just with that tow, and then switch back to the driver's seat. And so you chipped in an extra bit of damage that maybe your opponent has not, and that's going to make you come out on top and win that fight. For the weapon pod, again, the 60mm mortar pod is incredibly powerful. And then here in the commander seat, of course, you want to go with the thermal sensor array again. So with that said, most of these are going to be the same. There are a couple of differences. So the Super Hoken, this one gets an extra weapon. It gets the 30mm cannon. And this cannon, as far as I can tell, is pretty much identical to the one that the gunner gets. Only you can't move it manually around. It just aims wherever you're aiming with the helicopter, right? So theoretically, you can use the tow missiles on a tank, and then you can use uh, the 30mm cannon to finish him off, maybe in tandem with your gunner, but I just find the vehicle rocket pods to be better. I find them also to be better against air vehicles once you get good with aiming at them, which is no small feat, don't get me wrong. These things are very, very difficult to hit enemy air vehicles with. But I, I also just prefer this because of consistency, right? I don't like to change, depending on whether I'm using like the Russian heli or the US heli, to be flip-flopping between rocket pods and having the 30mm cannon. It just kind of always surprises me. So for consistency's sake, I just prefer running with the rocket pods all the time. So that's the only real difference there. Other than that, exactly the same. Uh, the SU-57 Felon, exactly the same loader as I use on the F-35. The other stealth helicopter here, once again, 30mm cannon pods, wire-guided missile, missile countermeasures, exactly the same. Uh, and also when it comes to the super behind, we're going with the same thing. So repair system, 30 millimeter cannon, all of that's the same there. And also the T20 tank here for the Russian side. This is going to be exactly the same as the American one. So there you have it, guys. I know this has probably been a bit of a long video. I just wanted to take the time to explain a little bit you know, some of the differences between the weapons, because I think especially if you're a new player, you pick up the game, you know, it isn't obviously apparent what the difference between one tank shell or another really is, or what the difference between one caliber of jet cannon is to another. So hopefully some of you guys found this useful. These are all of the loadouts that I prefer to use myself. If you guys have any differences to me in what you like to use leave them down below and let me know why you make these changes maybe there's something that i've overlooked here maybe there's something that you know i don't know about these so i'd definitely be interested to hear what you guys have to say on the matter thank you guys so much for watching the video today if you did enjoy it leave a like down below and of course subscribe for more battlefield but otherwise take it easy guys have a good one and i'll see you all in the next video